Hello everyone and thank you for joining this parent engagement which is aimed at Key Stage 2 parents. My name is Ellen Henretti and I'm one of the Vice Principals here at WSO. Taking you through this engagement today, I will be joined by Jenny Kilsby, our Head of Emerald House. In addition, we will have our two wonderful English coordinators, James Baliki, who oversees English in Year 4 to 6, and Manal Patel, who oversees English in Year 1 to 3, but will focus on Year 3 today. In this session, we have a few aims today. Firstly, we want to raise the engagement and enjoyment amongst our families here at WSO. Throughout this engagement, we hope that we will share with you the benefits of reading with families. And finally, we hope we will provide you with different resources, whether that be skills, books, or demonstrations of reading that can take place at home so that you can develop how you read with your child within your home. Hello everybody, my name is Mr Baliki and I am one half of the Primary English Coordinator team. During this slide I'm going to talk to you a bit about why it is important to read. I'm going to start off by going through a case study um, as it's really important that we understand um, the data and um, the reasons um, that we want our children to read. It's not just something that's coming from school, this is proven worldwide and this study is from the department of education in the uk now what they have found is they've looked at adults with reading skills varying reading skills and they found that adults with good literacy skills are much more likely to be in work than those with lower levels of literacy they've also found that unemployed adults are twice as likely to have weak literacy skills as those in full-time employment. Another thing that they have discovered is that better literacy skills are also associated with higher earnings. So we can see here straight away that being able to read at a young age is gonna help your child when they become adults. It's gonna help them in later life. They're more likely to get a job. They're more likely to earn more money. Okay, so literacy skills are so important when we look at later life. So what are the benefits? Well, reading helps to enhance brain activity and it also engages and stimulates the brain. It improves the vocabulary and the communication skills for our children. And communication skills are so important these days. Every job is going to look for someone that can communicate. We work in this world full of digital literacy and being able to communicate with others is still as important as it ever has been. Reading also helps to develop critical thinking skills. These critical thinking skills are so important nowadays and in our education today, we are always challenging our children to think critically about what they are doing. Okay. Can they go off on a tangent? Can they explore things on themselves? If they are if they are faced with a challenge, can they critically think about what to do? And reading helps to improve these skills and helps better equip them to do that. Children that read also have an increased ability to understand others, um, and it can enhance their mental and emotional well-being which Mrs Kilsby is going to speak about in more detail on the next slide. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, reading allows children to access the breadth of the curriculum. It doesn't just focus on reading or writing. It goes much further than that. It allows children to be able to access maths that they wouldn't have been able to access before. It helps them to understand science. It helps them in all of their subjects. With a better understanding of literacy, they can access so much more. As already mentioned, reading encourages our children to build their understanding of the world around them. It also helps to transport us as readers to a different time, a different place or a different world. Psychologists call this escapism. And they define this as the mental diversion from unpleasant or boring aspects of life, typically through activities involving imagination or entertainment. And I think there has been a very prevalent need for escapism throughout the pandemic, and particularly during periods of lockdown or quarantine. 
However, something that we often hear in the head of house office and through our pastoral monitoring is that children don't necessarily like reading. In fact, they would prefer to play on their video games. Now, I would like to make the connection between video games and the reading domains, those core reading skills, which we've already heard about. I also think that video games and online gaming do offer us a chance or offer our children a chance for escapism. Here is a couple of ways that you could make that link between online gaming and reading. So first of all, when reading, you can discuss the link between their reading and gaming. You could ask them perhaps, how could you turn this story into a game? What would the setting be? Building on those core skills of, read, of summarizing and explaining what they've read, you could also talk to them about which character would they want to be and whether they would be friends with this character. This again can build on the summarizing skills, but it could also build on the inference skills. You could talk to the children about what would happen during the first level of the game, trying to build in that sequencing. What's gonna happen first? What would happen next? How would they move up to the next level? So those are questions that you might want to ask while you're reading and to encourage children to make the connection between their reading and their gaming. It might be quite motivational for them. Also, when gaming, it's really important that we still keep an open discussion at all times about what it is that the children are doing online. We need to know what they're doing online to help keep them safe. It also helps us to help them make the connection between their reading and their gaming. So when they're gaming, it's great to try and discuss what has happened in the game, just like you would a story. Ask them to explain the key events and what led up to them. This builds on those core sequencing and summarising skills from our reading curriculum. Also, encourage your child to make the connections with the characters. Why did he decide to do that? Do you think that that was a good choice? This builds on our inferen inferential reading skills. It also fits in to lots of our skills which we learn about during our bespoke wellbeing programme, where we encourage children to make responsible decisions and to be aware of themselves, what motivates them, what escapism means for them. I hope that you found these ideas useful to make, help your child make the connection between their reading and their online gaming. Hello again. During this slide, I'm going to be speaking to you about our Reading Vipers. Our Reading Vipers are essentially a reading strategy that we use across Key Stage 2 to help our children understand the text that they're reading. Vipers aren't just used by our teachers. Um, we have a consistent approach across the whole of Key Stage 2 where our teachers use them in lessons. Our TAs have recently had training so that they are able to use them in class and with smaller groups out of the class. Now we want to introduce it to parents as well so that parents are also able to join this consistent approach and use it when listening to their children read at home. Essentially what they are is they are skills or sorry questions used to improve reading skills and there are a range of reading prompts that are based on the British national curriculum. As you can see in the table below we have six key reading skills and each letter of the vipers um, relates to one of those key skills. So for example the V, the V links to vocabulary um, so this will give a child the opportunity to um, give the meaning of a word or explain the meaning of a word in context. Um, you can go into more detail. You might say, um, explain why the author has used this word. Um, I stands for inference. Now, inference is giving the child an opportunity to use clues from the text. You may have heard of the saying, read between the lines. And that's essentially what we're doing with inference. We're asking the children to read between the lines. The answers aren't always there. They will have to gather a whole picture of what is going on and use the clues to find their answer. P for predict. This gives children the opportunity to predict what is going to happen in the story. This can be done at any stage. You could do it 
from the front cover. We could do it after each chapter, predict what's going to happen here. Um, we can do it halfway through the book. Prediction can be made almost at any point. Um, and it's a really useful tool to understand if the child understands what is happening in the story. Does their prediction make sense? Are they using the clues from what, is, what they have read to make a sensible prediction? Then we have E for explain. Explain gives us the opportunity to get the children to explain the information that they have read um, and going into more detail. And um, why do you think that has happened? Can you explain why this has happened? Then we have retrieve for R. And retrieve is essentially our, our bread and butter, our easy, um, our easy skill to work on. Retrieval questions are always in the text. We can physically go in and find the answer and pull it straight out of the text. They're there, the children will have read it. They're almost like a word search. Can you find the word where um, uh, so-and-so has said this? Um, and then they'll pull it out of the text. So we're retrieving that information. Then we have S for summarize. Summarize can be done after reading a paragraph after reading a page, after reading a whole chapter. Can you summarize what has happened? Can you pick out the key points? So these are our reading vipers. Over the next page, you will have the opportunity to watch myself and other members of the WSO staff um, uh, conducting small reading sessions and using vipers, viper questions to elicit whether the child is understanding what they have read. They'll be done in a variety of ways. Um, but enjoy, listen to the questions um, and give it a go. Thank you, Mr. Veliki, for giving us an insight into how Vipers are used at WSO. To support you to read at home with your child, we've put together some demonstration videos of Vipers in action. When you click on the links, you'll see a number of different adults here at WSO reading with a child. What you will find is consistent across all of the videos are, is that Vipers is an action in each of the texts read. Now, it may be that it's a fiction text or it could be a non-fiction text, but in each of them, the questions that are being used to guide the child to develop their reading skills are Vipers. Now that you have an understanding of the important reasons for reading, the vipers that we use at school and the types of questions you can ask when reading with your child at home, we have put together a list of recommended reads for each of the four year groups in Key Stage 2. This is not an exhaustive list, nor the only types of texts that your child should read. However, they are some amazing, well-known and well-loved classics or key stage two. When considering what to read with your child, it's important to take into account what they enjoy. They might enjoy coding or Lego and prefer to read a non-fiction book on one of those topics. They may have a keen interest in science and enjoy reading magazines about animals, or their preference may be a book of funny poems. All choices are valid and it's important for them to have a voice so that reading does not feel like a chore, but something that they actually want to do. Thank you so much for taking the time to think in detail about your child's reading. I would like to leave you with a few closing thoughts and ideas on potential next steps. First off, let's remember that a child who reads will grow up to be an adult who thinks. Reading is so much more than just an academic subject. It's a skill that will last a lifetime and it can transport us into very different places and help us to make connections with different worlds. Secondly, let's just have a look at this data from our accelerated reading programme. This data has been collected in the UK and internationally. It shows that just 15 minutes of daily reading accelerates reading growth in comparison to the national curve. 15 minutes is not a large amount of time, and hopefully, with a little bit of thought, you'll be able to find a reading routine that will work for you as a family. 
Remember, this doesn't necessarily have to be reading novels. It could be talking about something that you've read together or something that your child has read at school. I hope that this session has provided you with some inspiration on some next steps that you can take with your child to further their reading skills. Thank you very much for watching.